Honestly, all I wanted was just the job that allowed me to work from my couch with no alarm clock that paid me enough to cover my expenses. I just wanted something financially feasible. Maybe one day I could save up enough money to travel. That would be the dream, but that's all I wanted. I just wanted to work from a couch and cover my expenses. Like, is that too much to ask for? <laughs> My name is Dea. I am a freelancer, digital business manager, and entrepreneur. That word still makes me cringe when I use it in association with myself. And I'm super excited to be sharing my journey getting started online at $10 an hour as a virtual assistant with you today. And as always, there'll be timestamps below. You'll also see like the videos cut up into different sections. So you can kind of click to whichever section you are most interested in hearing because I don't want to waste your time because your time is precious. So the actual unglamorous truth of how I got started working online was I actually started on Upwork. So if you don't know Upwork, it's this online freelancing platform where you can essentially set up a profile, you know, include some of your experience. If you have any, I did not have any work experience when I first got started. And essentially you can go out and submit proposals for jobs that are listed on Upwork. And then the clients look through like all of the different freelancers and then kind of pick and chat with who they might want to work with. So that's how I got started. I got started there because I had absolutely nobody in my world that wanted to work online. I knew nobody, like I had no network, no connections whatsoever. I, I mean, when I talked about freelancing online with like family or friends, they were like, yikes, like, you, why don't you just get a real job, you know? But anyway, I got started on Upwork because I really just did not know where to get started. I was like, okay, let's just go to a freelancing platform. They probably have jobs there. I probably don't need to like, I don't know, schmooze, which is one of my least favorite things ever to do. So I started on Upwork, made an account. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna give this a go and see how it goes. I was at that time doing a six month internship at one of the big four consulting companies. That is when I came to the startling realization that uh, maybe this whole like doing this for the next four years of my life is not ideal <laughs> and I was like there has to be an alternative I have to go digging I owe it to myself and my life to try to at least find an alternative that would suit the lifestyle that I wanted to live and at that time I was just willing to take anything that paid minimum wage and I could work from my couch that was my only goal when I first got started I wasn't thinking about six figures I wasn't thinking about like I want to make tons of money or I want to travel or anything like that I was just thinking you know I was making minimum wage less than minimum wage at my internship if I I could do that and work from the couch I'm a happy woman like I'm literally I know it sounds kind of dramatic I would have been the happiest girl alive if I look <laughs> if I could just work from the couch for that amount of money because my boyfriend and I at that time we were living very very frugally we were shopping at discount supermarkets like the discount aisle of the discount supermarket we were not spending anything I feel like we were allowed to like order out once a month maybe um, we had a lot of strict budgeting things in place just because we made very little money I think at my internship I was making like 1.5k a month or something like that so we just had to be really frugal because we were living in the city center of Munich as well, which the rent there is really crazy. So yeah, so that's what we were doing. Like I was like, okay, you know what? As long as I can cover my expenses, minimum wage, I should be able to pull that. So that was my first and only goal when I first started like venturing into the Upwork world. So I dove into Upwork head on. Like I put in all the information that I had, you know, tried to make my profile stand out a little bit, but I didn't really know that much about Upwork at the time. So I just kind of did my best and was like, okay, let's see. And what I did was I just started applying to every single job that's sounded interesting and I was applying to dozens of jobs a day like they kind of limit how many connects you have you think you have to like back then you had to like spend two connects to apply to a job and you had like limited connects per month or something and they would refresh and you could like buy more connects and so yeah so I was spending all my connects and I think like as I went on I even started buying a few connects because I was just applying like a crazy person and that's what I recommend to you if you're just getting started is don't be picky if you're just getting started because we can't afford to be picky when we're just getting started and also it's a really great way to actually learn what you actually like and more importantly what you don't like about any of the tasks that you might want to dive into the services you might want to offer because when I first got the when I first got started, I had zero clue what I wanted to offer. I was like, I don't know, I kind of like design. I did some design in university. I don't know, I kind of like writing, but I'm not super good at it. Like, especially copywriting, I'm not super good at it. Um, I don't know, I guess I could do like admin stuff. I don't know, I was just trying out everything, basically. Everything that
anything that I was like, I think I can do that, or I think I can Google and figure that out, I applied to it. So I did lots of stuff. And I actually went through my emails, like all my Upwork messages and found a few screenshots of like exactly what services I did. So I did voiceover work. I did voiceover work for an escape room. I did voiceover work for English teaching schools in Japan. I would just like record sentences and they would play them, I assume, for kids in Japan to learn English. I also did voiceovers for a stock course, which I did not, I don't know anything about stocks. But yeah, if you go like and Google my name, you'll actually find like my voiceover credit on a Forex course. So super random stuff. And you know, as long as I had fun and I was like making again, minimum, at the minimum, minimum wage, which in Germany at the time, I think was like 850 euros, which is about $10 an hour. Um, I was happy. I was like, this is so exciting. I just, I get to work from home, like no alarm clock. I can be in my sweatpants. Like this, this is my dream. Like this is my dream. All right, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> Cause you can see this is from 2016. I have not heard this since. So let's see what this sounds like. It's so cringy to listen to yourself talk. Ryan, my, my birthday's, birthday's coming, coming up soon. soon. I, think I think I know, I know what, what I want. want. Well, I'm, I'm a, a woman who likes to plan, plan ahead. Plus, Plus the, the thing, thing I, want I want for my birthday, birthday might take you a while to get. get. Have, have you heard, heard of Jiba? Jiba is amazing. It's, it's a, a robot, robot for your home. He does everything for you. This, this little, little robot, robot is adorable. Is adorable. All right, that was fun. Other than that, I did some design work. I did admin. One of the easiest first projects I ever did was somebody wanted me to create like a little design of how they needed to print the book cover for their book. And I had no clue, like less negative 43 clue about how to design anything related to that. Like not even designing the book cover. He just wanted like to know the margins that were required for the book. Like, oh, here it needs to be like, whatever, two centimeters. Here it needs to be like 10 centimeters or something like that. So I just did that and I was like, this was way too easy. Like, I feel like he's paying me way too much. I think he paid me like a hundred dollars or something for it. I was like, there must be like a miscommunication because I must have missed understood what he wanted because that was way too easy. But I didn't, he was super happy. So I think that was the first time when I got introduced to the idea of like, some people are just really limited on time and they just want somebody to figure something out for them because I had to like Google and figure out all the different like margins and everything. And I mean, I was a Google connoisseur, if you will, at that point. I mean, like more so now even because I'm just like always trying to figure everything out by myself, which I can recommend to you as a very important skill to know if you want to work online because most things in life you can probably figure out through a good Google, maybe a few YouTube videos, all that good stuff. But anyway, so yeah, I did some design work. I also did like designing of like podcast um, cover art and YouTube thumbnails and stuff like that, which was all pretty fun. It was all like pretty random though. I also did like admin. So I like formatted presentations. I did translation. I translated a German resume into English. So like all very small projects. And actually the first project I took on was I think the translation one where I translated a German CV into English and essentially just put it back into her template. She paid me $10 for it. I think it took me way over an hour, but it didn't matter. I just needed one job. I don't know if you can hear the sirens. <laughs> and it didn't matter, it was just $10 as a one-time job. And if you're just getting started freelancing, that's what I recommend to you as well. Because when I started, I had no testimonials, no social proof, no credibility of any kind. I just had like a blank profile, which I mean, these clients must not have any trust issues because they trusted me to do work for them. Really that first job, you just wanna take on something that even if it's low paid, it doesn't really matter as long as it's a complete project. So my recommendation is not to take on an ongoing client like at $10 an hour forever, because then like it's hard to raise your rates like that. You might have to do like a salary reevaluation after like three months or six months or something like that. But either way, I recommend doing a fixed project at that first low price because then you know it's over and you have a job under your belt. You might get a testimonial from them, which you then can use to book future clients. I also did a lot of like English stuff for a Chinese company. So like they wanted somebody to come up with like scenarios for their comics, for children to learn English. Unless you have a really good skill set already, a lot of work experience, then obviously like be picky but I did not like I had really nothing and I like even after university I didn't really have any like specialized skills because I studied business so I was kind of just learning as I went <laughs>
All right, so now let's talk about where I found clients. So like I mentioned, when I first got started, I started on Upwork and that's where I found most of my clients. I was applying to, yeah, a crazy amount of jobs. Like at least, I think during my entire time at Upwork, I applied to at least like hundreds of jobs. And sometimes I think people get tripped up with like applying. They like apply to one or two and then they're like, oh, they said no, like I should just give up. Like it's obvious that this is not meant for me. And really you have to, and I speak as somebody who's like ultra sensitive. Like I have the thinnest skin of all time. Like somebody could be like, yeah, that's fine. And I'd be like, I've been shot, you know? So like, please know that like, you just have to continue on. Most of the time it's not personal. Like other people might just have better experience or might be a better fit or something like that. So just keep going. Like if you just keep persisting, the right things will come along and it snowballs over time. And I, I really say that from experience from like coming from nothing um, in terms of like work experience and connections and networks, no testimonials, no portfolio. I had nothing when I got started. So where I found my clients, mostly on Upwork when I got started. And then as I ventured into the online work world, um, started signing more clients. I was doing all of my freelance stuff like on the side of my internship. So I would do it every single night when I got home from work. So like from eight to 10 PM and I would work on the weekends on my freelancing stuff. I was just like, you know what, Dad, this is temporary. Like I know this is a lot of work. It's really stressful, but it's temporary. Like you're just trying to figure out if this is actually financially realistic, if you can make enough money to yeah, like sustain your lifestyle, your lifestyle, <laughs> my cheap lifestyle at the time uh, before you dive in full time because my internship slowly drew to an end and I was like, I need to know if I can make the leap safely because I'm a very risk averse person. So like people who are like, quit your job and like just leap, I'm, I'm like the opposite person of that. So yeah, when I first started, Upwork was my main place where I found clients. And then over time, as I started to dive into this online work world, I started finding a lot of Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups and I started joining all of those and that's when I got even more into like steeped into this world if you will and that's when I started making connections outside of Upwork and I started landing clients and finding clients through Facebook groups and I actually found one of my like favorite long-term clients I worked with her I think for like three four years through a Facebook group so don't hack it till you try I don't know if that's the saying but don't you know just try just try stuff just try whatever. Don't feel like you can't try stuff. Like go and just try every, that's stupid advice. Don't feel like, you okay. So yeah, so I started on Upwork, then I went into Facebook groups and started networking there. And then I found like even more paid membership groups. So I started joining some of those that were a little bit more strategic. One of my favorite groups on Facebook is the Digital Nomad Girls group. So definitely check that group out. There are a lot of awesome Digital Nomad Girls. I didn't even know what the term Digital Nomad was until I started diving into that group and being like, people do this like pe other human beings want to do what i want to do like people want to travel and work as well so yeah so that's where i found a few of my clients and i just kept going from there and i have to be honest after i think a few months i think in year one like towards the end of year one of me trying to work online i was fully booked out which was really exciting and then that started to go into like referrals so i am a huge people pleaser so whenever i work with clients i always under promise and over deliver which is another big tip i can give you is to make a really Really, really good impression because if you make a great impression people will want to refer you despite what we might think through our like scarcity mindset good talent is actually really 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 hard to find and so when somebody finds someone awesome they are happy to recommend you especially if you have some sort of referral percentage that's like i pay out 20 percent of the first retainer month for every referral you refer me after year one i was doing a lot of like word of mouth and referral marketing a lot of people came through the people that i had already worked with but i was still applying a lot and people were sharing a lot of these like remote contractor freelancer gigs in the Facebook groups that I was a part of. So I was applying every single week. Every single week I would set aside time to apply to lots and lots of jobs because that's what I recommend to everybody. Even if you're fully booked out, keep applying because when you are applying, you're not losing anything really. And if you have jobs and you have offers, then you have choices and you can always say no to them later, but it's great to have choices because then you can decide like, do I want to replace one of my clients who's not treating me the way I deserve to be treated? You know, that kind of stuff. If you want to hear a more detailed breakdown of like, I think I've worked with over 30 plus clients in the past few years um, and where I got them and my best tips for landing clients, then let me know via a comment below and I can definitely film that video and I'll include even like a pie chart. I'm already seeing the pie chart. So yeah, so that's how I got started. I got started on Upwork and then slowly migrating into Facebook groups. I took on every single job that I 
thought was interesting when I first started. And that's how I started my journey online. Like how I went from $10 an hour doing all sorts of like small admin, graphic design, voiceover, like how random is that? And slowly then I moved into like content assisting and then I moved into content management and managing processes for content for clients. And then I moved into project management. And from there I developed into a digital business manager. And that's how I actually was able to get to six figures as a freelancer. But I mean, like that's kind of like after this part of the journey. So yeah, if you're interested in hearing how I scaled from $10 an hour to like the six figure mark, let me know below as well. And I can definitely film that video of like some of my best tips for scaling. Yeah, and when I first got started, my pricing strategy was really just to match my minimum wage. I was like, if I could just do minimum wage from home, I would be happy. And essentially I was pricing in a way where I was being paid to learn because I was very conscious of the fact that I had no work experience. I had no social proof. They had no, no real reason to trust me. Like I'm still surprised I even landed clients. So I had to essentially incentivize them to give me a chance. And if I had started at like $80 an hour with no work experience, no way anybody would have given me a chance because that risk is too high for the client, right? So if the risk is lower because I'm cheaper, then they're more likely to give me a chance, which is why I also recommend if you're just getting started, start lower and you can always grow from there because as a freelancer, you can increase your rates with increasing clients. Like it's not really like corporate where you can only get a three to 5% salary increase or raise every year with a freelance thing. You can definitely scale much faster, which is what I did in the past few years. How I went from $10 an hour to like actually six figures is I just kept scaling and I scaled very quickly. So start low don't feel like if you start at ten dollars an hour you'll be locked in there forever you definitely won't be so yeah my pricing strategy was i'm being paid to learn what a privilege because i had no nothing like i really had nothing so essentially i was just like you're paying to train me like ten dollars an hour and i'm getting to learn about all these different online businesses seeing behind the scenes of how they all worked like that felt like an investment in me which when you are a freelancer or a small business owner like you are your biggest asset so invest in your own training invest in your education and if working with a client is going to train you or educate you in a way that you won't ever be through google or youtube like you can't really youtube or google how things work in an online business you kind of have to be there and be in the trenches to actually learn how all the processes work together so I was essentially pricing for like, wow, I'm being paid to learn, amazing. So that was my pricing strategy, if you will. <laughs> So yeah, so that is how I got started working online. I got started by not being picky, by just diving straight in. And my biggest lessons are definitely related to that. One, do not be picky when you're just getting started because you're actually doing yourself a disservice if you niche down too quickly because you don't know what you like and don't like until you try everything that could potentially be interesting. And I'm really glad that I did because I don't think I would have found what I love to do if I hadn't just tried things. And if you try it and you hate it, like that is a blessing. It's a blessing to know that you hate it. Another thing is when you're getting started, don't forget to think about how much risk the client is taking on, especially if you have no social proof or credibility yet on wherever you're trying to find jobs, especially if you don't have a portfolio to show like, hey, this is what I can do, right? So have a think about how you can mitigate the risk for the client a little bit. Like, can you start at a lower rate? Can you do a trial project for free for them? Can you do a little internship project for just one week to show them like, hey, I'm awesome. Like, give me a chance. How do you mitigate that risk so that it is yeah, a win-win for both of you, especially if they're giving you a chance to just get started. Another tip, again, related to pricing, start low. You can always scale from there. If you start low, you're essentially like validating your offer. If you start too high, you might price yourself out of jobs that will get your foot in the door with the right people. I call those strategic clients when they like get you access to a bunch of other clients that you would really like to work with. Sometimes it's okay to price to just get your foot in the door with them. Make that connection essentially like network with this person who can then connect you with other dream clients that you might have. So that's something that worked really well for me is one of my clients, I wasn't doing this strategically, but it really showed me the power of strategic clients is one of my clients was in a mastermind full of other business owners. And once I started working with her, she recommended me to her mastermind and that's how I signed even more clients. So don't discount things like that when it comes to your pricing, you know, be, be flexible essentially. And yeah, my last tip is definitely if you're just getting started, don't be shy about applying to things. Don't be shy about sending out applications. Don't be shy about cold pitching. Don't be shy about joining Facebook groups and giving value and actually trying to nurture relationships and all of that good stuff. 
you know, there is a lot of rejection in the world of freelancing, um, which, you know, speaking for myself, like I hate rejection. I hate, like for me, rejection feels like failure and I have a huge like fear of failure. So I'm with you there, but in order to make this successful, in order to make it sustainable, you have to like take the emotion out of it and really focus on the fact that it's about numbers at the end of the day, right? So you need to calculate what your conversion rate is from let's say a hundred applications you send out, how many people are getting back to you to the interview stage, how many people are pushing you through the interview to the paid trial task or something, and how many you are landing from there. You can't land a hundred out of a hundred. So the more you send out, the wider of a net you are casting. So that's it. That's how I got started at $10 an hour online as a virtual assistant freelancing, dipping my toes into the freelance world to see, is this actually realistic for me? Is this something that's financially feasible um, before I actually dove straight in? And I'm so glad every single day, I'm so glad I took that first small step because I would not be here. I would not be here traveling, six figure entrepreneur, all that good stuff if I hadn't gotten started. And it scares me sometimes to think that I could have not gotten started because I was too afraid to. So if you are on that line, like towing the line, you're like, I'm not sure, should I? I don't know. My biggest tip is just try, like try to take that first small step, like just take a very small step. It doesn't need to be this whole thing of like, I have to set up an entire freelance business and I have to do like health insurance and taxes and all that stuff. Like it doesn't need to be a big whole thing. Just focus on that first small step. What's the first small step that you can take today to take action? And I would love to know what your first small step is below if you'd like to share it with me and I can cheer you on on your journey. So I hope that video was useful. If it was, give it a like and I'll catch you in the next video. All right, bye.